there's a somewhat of a different atmosphere um, to today's walk. It's very inward, very, I don't know, kind of isolating a bit. Maybe, maybe that's because of the weather. Even the donkeys don't seem to be out today. <laughs> but I did manage to get into this car and talk to Dom, who's a uh, great-grandfather had the shop since I think in the, the mid 1800s. Yeah, I've not really spoke to too many people. Um, not really had the opportunity to speak to too many people. As I reached Churchtown, I took a break in O'Brien's bar, where the wonderful Mary took very good care of me. So I'm coming close to the mountains and uh, getting looking for a place to set up camp. And it starts raining. Happy day. <laughs> but listen, it's all part of the adventure. As I walked up this dirt road, I stumbled across an abandoned house. There was no better place to make camp for the night. I'm just getting ready to break up uh, camp here uh, for the morning. I did a little bit of calculation. I figured out that a quarter of this whole journey is in the county of Cork. Or, or near enough it. That's astonishing how big that is. I will be getting out of Cork today and into Limerick. And it appears that the sun is starting to break out and it's creating an absolutely beautiful effect on all of the plants and trees. And I can hear uh, falcons or, or, or uh, hawks or whatever they are, I can hear them. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful morning to get out early kind of witness it it's just spectacular really just truly amazing beasts absolutely incredible creatures so the great thing about walking at this time of year is there's loads of blackberries and can I just say Mmm, the taste, the burst in your mouth when you're on a long hike. And they're just everywhere. Oh, they're absolutely gorgeous. I've finally done it. I finally made it out of Cork. 11 days of hiking. And I don't know how many blisters recorded. But I've had absolutely incredible times. I've also had moments that have been really down in the dumps but uh, I'm here I've made it and now looking forward I look towards Limerick and at the end of this section Tipperary <laughs> my delight didn't last too long as I soon found out that getting past the Ballahora mountains would be much harder than I anticipated Oh, Valley Horror Mountains did me, but I was expecting this part to be a bit shorter and it's bringing me all the way through these bloody woods. Normally I love going through the woods, but I'm just too tired to enjoy it. Welcome to Valley Oregon, Michael. It was a privilege to stamp your card. Delighted to meet you and hope you achieve your goal and doing the whole of the Ireland way and you're more than welcome to any time back to Belly Org and I hope you enjoy your night. And stand again and stand against them Proud Edward's army and sent him homewards to think They were there from Monday till Saturday. Nobody knew that there once was a farmer who sat on his rick teaching his children to play with their ties on the farmyard, the ties on the moor. When along came a lady, she looked like an elegant young lady. So, 
that was some night. Probably had one too many to drink. And as my tired body trudged on, I couldn't help reminisce. Once I completed the short distance to Kilfinnan, I decided to stop. Luckily for me, I got to meet the famous Liam. Hey, good morning to you. I came out of uh, Kilfinnan. Lovely stay there actually. Ballyhora Backpackers. For anybody that's going through Kilfinnan, get yourself into Ballyhora Backpackers. First of all, we put it in Kilfinnan. Kilfinnan, <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> come to Teresa and Seamus are so lovely. So I love meeting people and having them stay here and when you walk through and there's different groups meeting each other and they're all hanging out together and the atmosphere is so nice. It's a great buzz. Got more followers here than I have on Twitter. <laughs> I didn't stay laughing for long. A serious uh, rejigging, re reevaluation of the signs need to be done. They're an absolute disaster, a disgrace, really. Um, I'm not just annoyed because I'm tired, just because I'm, I'm going around in circles and, and daylight is, is starting to catch up on me. But um, a lovely farmer showed me the way. Yeah, he showed me uh, a, a, a different route. So I was uh, hoping to get to the Gap of Arlo tonight, and. Um, it's uh, it's not looking likely. Uh, I think I'll just head to the campsite and just uh, rest up. Uh, kind of delighted Eve is there, to be honest with you, waiting. She's going to be joining me in, in, in the Multine way. Yeah, everyone getting food, which I'm really looking forward to. I'm tired, I'm hungry, and uh, the gap will have to wait until tomorrow. I got in last night, very, very tired, um, not a great sleep, and I've woke up sick this morning, so this hike into Tipperary is going to be, it's only 7 kilometres, but I'm just going to get it done and maybe just take the rest of the day off and start the next section. My old enemy, fear, was raging a war inside my head. Step by painful step, I set out again for that final 7 kilometres. So that's it, finally made it. It was a bloody long way to Tipperary, but managed to get through the Balahor section of the Ireland Way. Feet are in a bad way, but uh, we've just got to um, see what happens, take as it comes, reassess, and hopefully get, re get ready for the Multine Way. <laughs>